At this point in time, there are hundreds of thousands of views of people watching me shoot the Cimarron 1860 Army Type 2 Transition, which is a conversion model of the 1860 Army cap and ball revolver. And some might be wondering, well, if this is the conversion, what does the original look like? Well, here's what an 1860 Army cap and ball revolver looks like. Now this one looks super original. It looks really old. You can see all the character in the finish and even the grip has some little dings and stuff on it. And that's because this is Cimarron Firearms original finish on this 1860 Army revolver. Another interesting fact about the Cimarron 1860 Army original finish 44 caliber cap and ball revolver is that you can get it with a skeletal shoulder stock. In today's video I'm reviewing this revolver, the Cimarron 1860 Army cap and ball revolver in 44 caliber and original finish. Cimarron's original finish, as you can tell, looks like this is an original gun uh, from 1860s. It's got a very unique kind of pattern and patina to the metal finishes and then even on the grip it's not quite as shiny, it's a little bit more dull and there's little real shallow kind of dings and stuff that make it look like it's been used for over a hundred years. In previous videos you've seen me review this Cimarron 1860 Army Type 2 Transition which is a conversion of the 1860 Army cap and ball. And by conversion I mean they converted it from using a percussion system of a cap and loose powder and a ball manually loaded one at a time like a muzzle loader to a self-contained cartridge. Some of you viewing this video may not know what a cap and ball revolver is. So I'm going to explain it as quickly and as simply as I can. A cap and ball revolver is very similar to a muzzle loading rifle in that instead of having a self-contained metallic cartridge like this that has the primer, powder, and the bullet all conveniently packaged within this brass casing that you insert from the breech of the rifle or the firearm which means in from the back you load a cap and ball revolver or a muzzle loader from the front in a muzzle loading rifle you load it down the barrel in a cap and ball revolver you load it through the top of the cylinder right here and instead of having that convenient package all put together you have to load each one of those components independently. So you will put your powder down one of the chambers and then you will put your lubricated wad on top of that and then you will put your ball on top of that and then you will use the ramrod to shove it down in there and get it all nice and tight because you don't want any air between your powder and the ball. And once that's done, then you put a primer on this little, it's called a nipple right there. You put a primer on each one of those nipples. And then once your chambers are loaded and you have primers on your nipples, you're ready to fire. Once you fire all five or six rounds, depending on your situation, then you have to do the whole process over again. Now some of you might say, Clayton, why would we want something that is so complicated to load compared to a regular cartridge firing revolver? Well, there's multiple answers. You could be a collector. You could be just an enthusiast of black powder or cap and ball type firearms. And another reason is in most of this country, this is not considered a firearm any longer. It is an antique and since it's not considered a firearm, this can be mailed directly to your house without having to go through a federal firearms licensed agent. And no background checks. That being said, you will want to consult your local gun laws to confirm whether this is legal for you to have or not. 
If you have the Cimarron 1860 Army cap and ball revolver, you may be interested in an accessory they have available for it, which is their skeletal shoulder stock. The skeletal shoulder stock attaches to the grip of the revolver, similar to that. And I'll show you how to attach it in just a second. It is important to note that this skeletal shoulder stock will only fit certain cap and ball revolvers from Cimarron. This stock will not fit on a conversion revolver like the 1860 Army Transition that I just showed you a little bit ago, as it has special cutouts for the grip that the conversion revolver does not have. Putting a shoulder stock on a cartridge fired handgun can get you in trouble because you could be converting your revolver into a short barreled rifle, which without the proper licenses can be a felony. But with a cap and ball revolver such as the Cimarron 1860 Army, you should be able to use this skeletal shoulder stock with no legal ramifications, but please check with your local laws before doing so. To attach the shoulder stock, you will remove this screw right here on both sides of the gun, and then you will replace it with this screw. Once that screw is in the gun, it sticks out each side just a little bit and it fits right into these notches in the stock. On the bottom of the Cimarron cap and ball revolvers that are set up to take the skeletal shoulder stock, there's a little divot right there, which is where you will put the hook on the bottom of this shoulder stock, somewhat like that. So once you've replaced that screw with the long one, the stock will come in like this and hook on the screw. And then the bottom will come underneath and hook right there. And then you will turn this knob to tighten the tension on it to where it's rigid. To remove the stock, simply loosen the tensioner off of the bottom of the grip and then pull off of the screws. I've put my charge of powder in the chamber and I've put a lubricated wad on top of that. And I put the ball in and then rotate it underneath. I call it the ramrod, but I'm sure there's another word for it. And then shove that down with the ramrod. Nice and tight. And it shaves off a ring of lead. I don't know if you can see that. I broke part of it off. It shaves off a ring of lead from around the ball, which is good because that means you got a good seal on your chamber with your lead ball. And then you can grease each chamber in front of the ball and that would keep any flash from powder residue on the front of here from igniting chambers that weren't already in line with the muzzle. So having an accidental discharge of these chambers that are next to the one you're shooting. Once you've loaded your other components, then you take a percussion cap and stick it on each nipple, like so. Now that the percussion cap is on there, when the hammer drops on that percussion cap, this cylinder will fire.
Cimarron 1860 Army cap and ball revolver, 44 caliber, and a skeletal shoulder stock. It's a good time. This skeletal shoulder stock for the Cimarron 1860 Army cap and ball revolver really gives it a lot more stability. It's a lot of fun to shoot, both with the stock and without. But having the stock is sure a nice addition. By the way, before I forget, I should tell you, in the interest of full disclosure, that while I am fairly handy with a revolver, a cap and ball revolver is a new thing for me. I'm a rookie, so I'm not going to be giving you any specific details on loading techniques, uh, what kind of primers to use, what kind of powders to use, besides black powder, black powder substitute, um, what size of ball, all of those kind of deals are way better covered by other people who are professionals with black powder revolvers. Mike Bellevue from the Duelist 1954 YouTube channel recently put out an awesome video on everything that goes into loading a cap and ball revolver. Also Cimarron has on their own YouTube channel a couple videos that talk about the loading of cap and ball revolvers, specifically one where they were loading a Walker's Walker. Now the Walker's Walker is a different revolver but it's the same principles. So the same principles for loading apply. This cap and ball revolver has definitely been a new adventure for me, but I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Once I started doing it, it was way less complicated than I had thought it was going to be. One thing I have learned about cap and ball revolvers is that once you shoot them, you better clean them. So after all that shooting I just did, I suppose it's time for me to go clean this beast. Yeah.